This is a Mesa Mark 525, one of their new little how much stuff can we cram in a tiny box apps. And you know, they full of Mesa marketing, you know, 25 watts versus 10 watts. That's a Pinto triode switch. Um, lots and lots of stuff in here, very cramped. And I had just did about a 50 minute video that I've decided to just scrap because it was getting so boring that I wouldn't watch it. Um, and it's all, it was initially all about going down the rabbit hole with its muting circuit. In stock form, this board is over here and you cannot access the output tubes. You cannot access the phase inverter tube. You, uh, certain things are hidden and I've had this up like this for test purposes with some painter's tape just to keep things from touching that should not touch when used like this. And um, I had to figure out how their mute circuit works. Uh, some mute circuits are normally off and give a pulse to certain transistors, which turn the transistors on and, and, and ground things out just for a few milliseconds while a channel is being changed or whatever. This one does it the opposite way. This one is always sending a voltage uh, to let those transistors pass signal, and then it briefly turns off the voltage, um, uh, which will then uh, mute things temporarily while channels are being changed and all. And uh, this amp had two problems when it came in. First of all, there was um, almost no output level whatsoever. And what there was, was very grainy and yucky sounding. And number two, even if I bypassed all the preamp stuff and went into the effects return, um, I could not hear anything through the amp. If I go into the front and, and hit it with all the gain and, and dime things, I could hear things, but it was very low in level and very grainy and yucky. And uh, if I went to the effects return, I could hear nothing. Uh, I, the effects return is controlled by a relay that relay is turned on if uh, uh, plugs are put into the send and return. I verify that the relay is flipping. So I should have heard something going into the effects return. Right after that effects return is, J, uh, is uh, J174 mute point three, which is right here. Uh, I confirmed that the Darlington is, is, is turning on and off correctly. That, that's the one that sends voltage to all the um, on the schematic, four mute points, and in, in, in actuality, only three are in place. There's one over here that well, I don't remember where it is now, but the pads are on the board. That resistor, uh, sorry, transistor was never placed. Uh, <laughs> this uh, resist, uh, transistor, this J174, uh, measured differently than the other two as far as resistance goes. Um, Outside, uh, this one's about half the uh, 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 off-state resistance of these, which means that this one is actually the better mute. Um, as a test, I lifted one leg of this, which would mute, uh, unmute, you take away the possibility of muting um, uh, the effects return, plugging straight into the effects return. At that point, I could hear things coming into the effects return, but still very low volume. Um, not to get sidetracked, this one, me this uh, transistor measures wrong. I've got a bag of 174s around, I can do that. But I wanted to get the amp working, plugged into the effects return and just dealing with that. Uh, at that point, I could hear things in the output. So this was affecting things, that, this was muting things that should not be muted to some degree. <coughs> Pardon me. but. Um, at that point, I could hear some, some things. They're a little bit louder. Um, and I could then hear when I took measurements on the phase inverter. Before, I could not even hear when I took measurements from the phase inverter. And yes, if you've worked on this amp, I know it has a speaker on-off switch. I verified that it's working correctly. Um, but I was getting uh, about 38 volts on the cathodes of the phase inverter. According to the schematics, it should be 54 volts. I was getting... 38 volts on the grids of the phase inverter. According to schematic, that should be about 18 volts. And I was getting uh, like 300 volts on one pin of the phase inverter and like 100 volts on the other. And that's crazy. 
So uh, I'm about to play, uh, measure all the resistors on there to find out what's going on in the phase inverter. Uh, to, to do that, I'm going to disconnect this ribbon cable so I can get this board out of the way. At least more out of the way. So I can access this area. And then i got to figure out which of these resistors are actually tied to the phase inverter. And everything's kind of hidden. Um, somewhere in here are the plate and cathode resistors for this phase inverter. And I will figure out what's what. Something is amiss there. Before I do that, I'm going to change out this tube. Uh, the, the owner put in all new preamp tubes and new power tubes to try to fix this himself. It's possible that there was this fault with the uh, muting circuit. And so changing the output, uh, the phase inverter tube did not fix that, but he got a bum tube and wouldn't know that. So I'm going to switch that out before I do anything crazy. But, um, you know, this is the fun of these apps. And just because I know that the resistor that connects to pin one and pin, the resistors that connect to pin one and pin six of this tube are somewhere on this board, it does not necessarily mean that they're that close. If I'm lucky, it'll be these two right here. Then I got to figure out the cathode stuff because those, those voltages are telling me that the phase inverter tube is not biasing correctly. Um, and that's always a fun thing to get into. So the end will eventually happen with this app. There's just so many layers on this. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm going I'm to keep to the subjective. I have not found that even the best sounding mesas to be reliable. And this one, they have stacked the cards against them in a lot of very meaningful ways, which means that they have stacked the cards against the owner. I don't like that. But I'm going to go grab a cheeseburger or something and come back and, and ponder this because these are not my favorites. Uh, if I can get it working, I'll have a great sense of pride in that because this, this, this is a tough one. It's mostly because it's like playing Operation to get in to fit in these tiny spaces without burning anything. I never want to uh, burn a Mesa board. Um, given time, they will do that themselves. Okay, two steps forward, one step back. I confirmed that that J174 was bad. Um, I have not replaced it yet. It's just out of the circuit. Um, and at that point, I was able to confirm that the brand new uh, Mesa branded Softec 12AX7 that was in V5, uh, which is the phase inverter, uh, was in fact a dud. Uh, I put in a different 12X7 and everything's come back to life. Uh, okay, I'll stand by and you can hear it. EQ works on both channels. On both channels, I've already confirmed that the 25 watt, 10 watt thing works. That's triode mode. That's pentode mode. And uh, each mode of the two channels, each channel has three modes works. So here's clean, fat, turn the master down, crunch. Go to channel two with what they call the Mark II C plus. And all the, the switching works on the channel two. And the triode mode works. Pentode works. Now to the middle position, which is the Mark IV. And extreme. Where's the 
versus Mark IV, which is... <laughs> Mark IV is a bit more nasal compared to the extreme. So all that's great. So that's all the two steps forward. The one step back is that the reverb is not working. Now, according to the schematic, there's a mute uh, for the reverb input driver stage. That mute was not actually populated on the board, so that can't be the fault. Uh, this driver and recovery stage for the reverb are, are both halves of V4. Swap that out, no difference. So, I've already confirmed there's no switching for the reverb. It's either on or off, and both the reverb level pots are at 10. They're all the way up. This should have as much reverb as the amp has. Uh, so, either there is a fault in the reverb circuit. Could be that tank thing they got there, the little bitty tank. I think it's likely that there is some uh, part of the reverb circuit that has to be tied to chassis, and it is not at this moment. This is up in the air. Um, there is a little section of bare metal on the rear panel. The rest is all covered in paint that makes contact with these two pots. And for all I know, that's also being used somehow uh, to complete the reverb circuit. So I'm going to put this back together in just a minute. Uh, at least partially, and see if the reverb re returns. I did try a different tube. That's not it. Um, I don't want to say, congratulations, it's loud again. It won't go quiet again, at least in, on that uh, transistor for another year or two. Uh, you know, it is a Mesa. I can't guarantee my work for forever on these things. But you don't have any reverb now, so let's see if I can get the guy some reverb. Well, I feel like a bit of an idiot. I was, for some reason, I forgot when I took it apart, that it actually has a reverb tank down in the cabinet. This black box here right next to the reverb controls, for some reason my brain said they have a little digital thing in there for a little proprietary reverb, reverb thing. And that's where it is, and why don't I have reverb? Because it doesn't show the uh, jacks going to and from an external tank on the schematic. It just shows transformer hooks up to reverb. The reverb transformer is over here we can't see it's over there and right next to that a bunch of wires go to this board and I, th I just figured they had some little digital thing they don't so i expect when i put this back in its uh, combo cabinet with its tank uh, that i will be hearing reverb i hope so because i have to put the whole thing together in order to put it in there and do the test because the tank that it uses is not the same um, fender style tank uh, that most amps use that I have for test purposes. So uh, the reverb was never the complaint, so hopefully that's fine. So I just got to find my bag of J174s, swap that out, and button it up. And confirm everything is working. Well, the reverb works. Definitely sounds like a small tank in a small cabinet. Um, bad news, not bad news, just minor irritation really is out of all the bipolar JFETs in the world, I've got just about everything except uh, J174. So I'm going to order order some. They're cheap. won't take long to get here. For some reason, I have like 300 of a J201. I uh, must have misordered from Small Bear at some point and who knows what I accidentally paid for that. Um, also, uh, I don't know if it's going to be apparent on the phone, but at least when uh, facing the rear of the cabinet like this, that fan is really kind of artificially loud. It, it kind of creates a, a resonance inside the cabinet. It'd probably be okay from the other side. <laughs> But I imagine the owner will be delighted to get it back once we get that one little 30 cent part changed out. <laughs>